Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jane Dunnewald, and today I would like to show you how to make a stencil out of interfacing, which I invented a few years ago and have used a lot in my own work on paper and also on fabric. Um, what we're going to be doing, a few examples. Maybe you can't see those against my shirt, but you'll see them as we go along. It's uh, pretty straightforward. I'm using Craft Fuse, which is a fusible that has a very smooth overall heat uh, affected fusible on one side. Now I'm, I'm, I'm specifying this because there are other interfacings. This is a non-woven interfacing. It's a polyester product. There are other varieties that are a lot thinner and there are other varieties that have tiny little dots of adhesive, heat sensitive adhesive on the back, and you don't want those. This is far preferable for what we're doing. So you want to look for either the Craft Fuse brand or a non-woven fusible interfacing that has the smooth surface of fusible on it and not the little dots. Okay. So the first step is to cut two pieces the same size. And simplest thing, it can be any size, but remember when you're stenciling, depending on what you have in mind to do, you don't want to make it too small because you don't want, um, well, it's easier to show you one right here. If, if this was any smaller, I'd be getting awfully close to the edge. And when I did the stenciling or applied the, the paint or the colorant, there's a chance I could get off the edge. So it's better when you're making a stencil to keep the design inside and leave some space around it in order to make sure you, you don't later accidentally, you know, you're pouncing along and adding the color and you accidentally get too close to the edge and then you've kind of screwed it up. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, with two pieces and I'll square these up later. They're not exact. I could cut them with the rotary cutter, you know, it's okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. But when I'm cutting the stencil, I want to put the two fusible sides together because eventually, so that you, you understand this process from start to finish, one of the things that makes this so fabulous is that I'm going to put a piece of nylon net or mesh between these two pieces before I fuse them together. And that will create this surface that I can then mount free standing shapes onto which is a real advantage with stenciling because it eliminates the need to create a lot of little bridges that hold all the parts together. Okay, so this is one real advantage of working with stencils this way, but it's also true that you can create all of your own designs and they're very flexible. This one doesn't need the net because it doesn't have a lot of floppy parts, but it's still a really, I, I printed it, it's cool. And I've got one in progress here that I'm gonna show you. So first I put these two together and then working with, I use an X-Acto knife. I use a number 11 blade X-Acto knife. And let's keep it simple for the sake of the demo. So I'm cutting through both layers. And when I cut through both layers, There's my basic shape. Now, this stuff is nuts. Um, I think Tool, T-U-L-L-E is another name for this. It's very heat sensitive. It'll melt pretty easily. So uh, I really like this finer stuff because, or this finer mesh, because it means that you don't see the texture later when you're printing. They make this tool in, in uh, heavier weight that has slightly larger openings. And I sort of abandoned using that version because you almost always were getting the texture and I didn't care for it, but that's a personal preference. Use what you've got and see how it works. And then you can go looking for the real stuff, which if you buy it these days, sometimes you have to buy a lifetime's worth because it all comes packaged together. If you can find it by the yard, that would be great. Okay, so I have a piece right here and I'm going to cut this a little bigger by that I mean longer than the interfacing because then I can use this to hang it up to dry later when I put on the paint. Okay, so now I'm going to put the tool 
between these two layers, or these two pieces, so it's layered in there. I'm gonna line up. The most important thing is not the edges. The most important thing is that these two pieces are aligned. And that's very important that this net be um, nice and flat in there. And then I'm going to get a piece of parchment paper and cover this mainly to keep from melting the uh, net. So what I'm doing is now the heat is melting the fusible that is on the interfacing and creating one surface with that net sandwiched in between. I can turn it over. Ooh, didn't want that. Now, this is the point at which I probably do want to square this up because I don't want to iron on that fusible, mainly because it'll be bad for the surface of the iron. So that's the worst edge right there. Maybe do a little bit of trimming here. And okay, now I can really give it some steam so that I know all the edges are secure. And I'm tempting fate by putting the iron against that net. Okay, now, here's a very cool thing. Off camera, I cut this little piece that's freestanding, and now I can put it in here. And when I do a design element like that, I don't need to put it on both sides and make it match up. And you'll see why when I add the paint to this. So there I am, it's gonna be really nice. Now I do wanna say that when I was having trouble finding the tool because I don't live in a big city anymore, I thought about trying silk organza and that's what this is. And I made a stencil with silk organza, but it didn't print because the paint, I mean, when I got ready to stencil, the paint stayed on the silk organza and I couldn't push it through. So I'm trying to save you the, mis it wasn't really a mistake. I'm glad I did it, I'm the teacher. It's good for me to know this, but this is essentially useless because I can't get the paint to push through um, when I try to print it. I'll show you the example that I did when I get ready to demo the painting itself. Now I'm ready to coat this with paint because I originally thought that when these two layers bonded together, they would be secure enough and, um, the, the surface would be such that when I printed paint through the opening in the stencil, it wouldn't go through around the opening, but in fact it does. So that means we have to seal this on both sides. So I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, in order to seal the stencil, you can use any kind of paint, as long as it's acrylic and it will be waterproof when it dries. But I like to use old house paint that we used. This is my front door and um, I like to use up paint that I already have because I wouldn't want to use an expensive specialty paint like a, an expensive tube acrylic or textile paint. So I'm just going to brush paint onto the interfacing. And most of the time you're going to have to coat it on both sides. So this is a nice thick paint. Works pretty well. The paint can be any color. You could use gel medium if you had it, but that would be an expensive choice, I think. More expensive than just using up what you have. And you don't have to be too concerned about getting onto the net because I'll show you a little trick with that in a minute here. When I get ready to do this center area, I can just paint right onto it, which is why I don't need one on the back. And I suppose it would not be a bad idea to put on some gloves. I didn't think about that. 
and they're clear across the studio. This paint is non-toxic, it won't hurt me, but I also don't have really nice fingernails that I need to protect either, and you might. Okay, so to flip it over and paint that little shape in and finish filling this in. Uh, you would not want to use spray paint for this in case you're wondering about using up a can of spray paint that you have. I don't think that would do a very effective job. It really needs to be a paint that will sink into the interfacing in order to seal it completely. And when you get to the point of finishing, you can use the brush and just brush over the net like this and that will make most of the paint stay on the paper underneath, the surface underneath. And if you pick up the stencil, by the way, this will be heat set once it dries because any paint that you put on a fabric needs to be heat set, even if it's house paint. And when I iron this, these little wrinkles that I've got here will probably just flatten right out and they will not be a problem later. Okay, so once I've got that done, I can take the dry brush, like I said, and brush that up. You can see there's very, maybe, I hope you can see, there's very little paint actually on the mesh or the tool because I pulled it up quickly. But if I wanna get rid of that, I can just take the brush and brush it out like this and that'll remove any bits of paint that are still stuck to the mesh. Although you want to think about that before you do it because sometimes that adds a nice texture that's kind of attractive later. So I left this little bit at the top so that I could hang this up to dry. So I'm going to hang this up on my clothesline here, or you can hang it on a hanger with a couple of clothespins. If you don't have a clothesline, that's another good way to do it. There are a lot of ways you can adapt it, but you don't want to leave it drying flat down on something because it'll stick to wherever you leave it. So I'm gonna go off camera and hang this up and then I'll show you how to print the stencils. Okay, now let's print. It's fun making them, but then it's more fun printing them. I wanna show you a couple of things. I wanna remind you about the organza because I'm gonna show you right now why this didn't work, okay? Um, then I'm gonna actually show you how the others print that do work. And then I'm gonna get bold and try and experiment printing this one, even though it doesn't have paint on it, so we see whether what used to happen, which is that the paint will actually go through the interfacing, we'll see whether or not that's true, because this is a new interfacing that is a little bit heavier than what I used to use. So I'm dying to try it out, and why not try it in front of everybody, and we'll see whether it works or not, and then we'll know. Okay, so the first sample I want to show you is what I did with the stencil that had the organza on it, okay? So essentially the best practice for printing stencils, kind of a general way is to use a stencil brush. It looks like this, it's flat on the bottom and the motion is like this. Sometimes you can use a roller, a paint roller, and occasionally you can get away with using a squeegee, but in general, I don't really care for the squeegee and I'm a little bit skeptical of the roller because it's easy to push paint underneath this edge and then you, know, you don't have a really perfect image anymore. And you would not attach these to the back of a silk screen and try to print them that way. That's not effective either because you're trying to push the paint through too many layers. You know, this interfacing is a little bit on the thick side to begin with. And by the time you, you uh, temporarily adhere that to the back of a silk screen, a classic silk screen, a blank, um, you're just having to push the paint through too many layers. So abandon the idea of the organza and that'll go in the trash. Okay, so the only roller I've ever had any luck with, and I'm gonna go ahead and use it is this foam roller and it's a very dense foam. It's not the kind of roller that you usually use on a wall that has that sort of, I don't know, terry cloth or kind of weird lamb's skin or lamb's wool or whatever it is. It's not that kind of thing. It's, it's just hard foam rubber. 
So I'm gonna try that on this and, and we'll see how it does. The reason I'm choosing this roller here is because this has a lot of open space. And um, for that reason, <clears throat> this roller might make an even a more even coating or a more even printed surface than using even the largest stencil brush I have. You know, I could do it this way. And I may come to the conclusion here on camera that this is always the preferred way to go. And by the way, they do make stencil brushes that have this kind of heavy foam or dense foam as instead of bristles. And I'm not a huge fan of that either because the paint that, that you put on that foam can be too unevenly distributed and it creates a problem. Now you can use textile paint. I'm just using a basic Liquitex acrylic and I'm gonna put it out, let's see, so that you can see, I'm putting it out on the plate. And then I'm going to use the roller, get the roller uniformly coated. And then I'm gonna have a go at it. Now, one of the beautiful things about stenciling is it gives you a lot of control over how you apply the paint, whether you want it to be thick or thin or whether you want to mix colors. I mean, I'm already seeing this great opportunity here to get out my gold metallic paint and put some over here so that I have two colors happening at once. And another nice thing about using the roller, I'm deciding, is that it doesn't have to be completely uniform. So I can have sort of an irregular background, which might be pretty agreeable on a large open area like this. So let's take a look and see how this looks. That's pretty nice. Now let's compare it to how the brush would do. With the brush, when I get the paint on the palette, and I'm just using a plastic plate, I wanna get the paint evenly distributed on the end of the brush, and then I'm applying the paint like this. And you can see that's going to take a long time compared to the roller if what I want to do is fill in the whole thing with paint. But it also gives me the opportunity to do this kind of cool um, textural thing. So I'm going to sort of head for that with this piece. It looks kind of mottled. And if I had another color of paint, then I could add additional color and blend it, and that, that could be pretty cool. When I finish using these stencils, I just rinse them off with cool water. You could let the paint build up. I know plenty of people do that with their stencils. I guess that wouldn't really hurt anything, but you wanna make sure that if you wanna keep the mesh clean, you do it while the paint is wet. That's kind of an interesting texture. Okay, now let's move over and do this little vine. And I think I'm gonna switch to a, well, I'll start with this bigger brush, see how it goes. The size of the tool has a lot to do with how successful you are. If you're using too big a brush on a little stencil, it won't go as easily as it would go if you adjust the size of the brush to the size of the stencil itself. Now, with this sort of a stencil that doesn't include the net or doesn't feature the net, I don't have a problem because the stencil is very, very stable, especially once it's been painted. But if I'm using, back to the stencil that I used here, if I'm using this kind of stencil, I wanna make sure, I said it earlier, but I wanna emphasize that, the net needs, needs to be as uh, taut between the two layers as possible. And it is a nylon or a polyester product, I, I guess it probably varies. So it won't really stretch over time, but it does need, this will go more easily for you if it's pretty taut at the beginning. Okay, great, that looks great. Now we're going to try this one. And so bated breath. Even if the paint goes through the interfacing and this fails, 
and we all know it and we all see it, I can still paint it and, and it'll be fine later because it's all acrylic paint. And we should know pretty early And don't forget to keep redistributing the paint on the brush every time you add more from the palette so that you don't get a big gloppy bunch of it down on the stencil that you can't get rid of. Okay, I don't think I need, I, I'm dying to see what's happening and I don't think I need to do the whole thing in order to know. So let me finish this little row right here. Might have been able to go with a smaller brush here too, to tell you the truth. But you see, one of the beauties of stenciling, I think I may have already mentioned this, is that you have control over the amount of paint that you add, so you can decide how modeled or completely filled in the shapes are gonna be. Oh, how about that, hot dog? Okay, so if you've got a fairly thick paint, you can, looks like you can skip the stage of painting out the interfacing because if I don't wash this out and I just keep adding paint and I let it dry, it will eventually kind of seal it without having to go through the painted step. I would say as a caution though, that if you're making one like this and you've got one piece uh, of interfacing here, remember these were not doubled up, I would go ahead and 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 use the, the, the precautionary step of painting the entire thing because otherwise you'll have exposed uh, adhesive on this side and it would be better to cover that up with paint instead of uh, not covering it with paint and possibly running into some trouble with it later because it's only one layer. If it's only one layer, the paint might go through it when you're printing in a way that it doesn't when it's doubled up like this. So I hope this has encouraged you to dig out your interfacing. And if you don't have any, get a little bit. It's a very inexpensive product. So this is a really inexpensive way to make a stencil, whether you make a stencil that employs the tool or the net, or whether you don't. Either way, great way to make a stencil. And they're long lasting. You can rinse them off with water. You can use them with all kinds of products safely. And if you have enjoyed this video, or you've got some questions, if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe. And please ask any questions down below because I love to answer questions and I like to know what's going on with you. Okay, thanks a lot for being here.